Hi everyone, it's Catherine Breyer. Today I'm going to be presenting on epigenetics. Just an overview of the presentation. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what epigenetics is, how it works, how epigenetic factors bring about change, and then going to talk about epigenetic changes in disease. And I'm going to go a bit further into some more detail, specifically with regards to gestational diabetes, obesity, and preeclampsia. And the reason I chose these two, three things is because of how prevalent it is in our patient population. Epigenetics can be defined as the analysis of change that occur on chromatin and DNA that alter gene expression, but without changing the primary DNA sequence. So epigenetic changes are heritable where they occur over a round of cellular division and they may be removed during, for example, mitosis and then added back in a daughter cell, resulting in preserved information. And these changes and modifications impact many aspects of normal development. Um, they may be altered in response to developmental cues or environmental exposures. And epigenetic changes are reversible, unlike changes the, to the genomic sequence that aren't reversible, changes, epigenetic changes are reversible. Modifications are chemical alterations to DNA or chromatin. The principal epigenetic modification to DNA is methylation, which involves the attachment or removal of a methyl group to a DNA base or histone protein. And as a result of these changes, the gene expression and regulation is altered. These changes can affect individual sites on a gene or large areas of chromatin. Epigenetic regulation refers to the regulation of gene expression by epigenetic modifications. And regulation controls transcription at three levels, namely by means of DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding RNAs. Just to explain the three various processes in a bit more detail, DNA methylation involves the addition of a methyl group, a CH3, to carbon-5 in a cytosine base to create 5-methyl cytosine. Methylation occurs almost exclusively at cytosines where the cytosine is next to a guanine. And common sites for DNA methylation include promoter or enhancer regions of affected gene. And this results in gene silencing, which then prevents transcription of the gene. So DNA hypermethylation involves the removal of one or more methyl groups from cytosine bases. And this may activate the expression of a gene that was previously silenced. And the lack of methylation permits a more open chromatin configuration that facilitates transcription. The second process is called histone modification. Histones are proteins that form a multi-subunit core around which DNA can be wrapped. And once tightly compacted, it forms what is called or known as a nucleosome. The N-terminal histone tail protrudes from the chromatin and this is the site at which several epigenetic modifications occur just because it's an unstructured amino terminal tail of histone protein, so it's more accessible. Epigenetic modifications at the N-terminal tail of nucleosomal histones include methylation, acetylation, phosphorylation, and a few others. Um, many of these processes are catalyzed by enzymes, and some enzymes may also catalyze the removal of a protein, and histone deacetylation is common in certain malignancies. Histone modifications may alter the affinity of the histone proteins for DNA. They may also result in recruitment of other proteins that affect chromatin compaction. And it is a various combinations of modifications that will determine the effect on transcription. The third process refers to non-coding RNAs, and these molecules are longer than 200 nucleotides, 
Um, they are involved in regulation of cell function through a wide range of mechanisms. They can degrade RNA transcripts or inhibit translation of RNA into proteins. They may also mediate histone modification and DNA methylation, and dysregulations of RNAs may affect the development of certain diseases. This image shows epigenetic modifications on histones and DNA. The yellow circles on both the histone and DNA components control accessibility of DNA to transcription factors and other regulators and forms the basis of epigenetic modifications. These epigenetic marks are established by writer proteins and they are interpreted by reader proteins and may be removed by eraser proteins. Epigenetic changes in disease. Evidence from emerging research has shown that environmental factors can cause epigenetic marks in DNA and proteins that may be associated with increased susceptibility to several diseases. These environmentally induced epigenetic changes may only elicit an effect much later on in life. The epigenetic changes can include global hypermethylation and or gene-specific promoter hypermethylation, as well as changes in histone methylation and acetylation. Certain nutrient deficiencies have been shown to be linked to altered epigenetic regulation. Starvation-induced epigenetic changes have been proposed to lead to metabolic reprogramming that is responsible for obesity later in life. Intrauterine exposure to higher than normal levels of glucose, example due to maternal obesity or diabetes, can also lead to altered DNA methylation that predisposes offspring to develop diabetes and or obesity. All cancers are epigenetically abnormal. Some cancers share common epigenetic signatures. Specific patterns of alterations in epigenetic marks are characteristic of different cancer types. Promoter hypermethylation in several genes preceded development of certain malignancies, and this was found to be predictive of cancer development. Epigenetics and gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is a common metabolic disorder in our patient population. Epigenetic modifications in response to nutritional and environmental factors influence maternal hyperglycemia in pregnancy and fetal metabolic programming. This leads to change in gene expression and genome stability and has a lifelong consequence in the offspring. Obesity predisposition and weight loss outcomes are correlated to changes in epigenetic patterns. Fetal exposure to diabetes and diabetes-related metabolic derangements may alter the functional development of key organs and thus potentially increase children's susceptibility to chronic diseases. Davila et al. observed that intrauterine exposures to maternal diabetes and obesity accounted for 47% of cases of type 2 diabetes mellitus before 22 years of age in the offspring. Global DNA hypermethylation was found in the placentas of patients with gestational diabetes. Maternal hyperglycemia is associated with placental DNA methylation alterations at the leptin and adiponectin genes. Significant correlation between the two-hour glucose value and the degree of DNA methylation of the leptin gene was found. High level of maternal insulin resistance in the second and third trimester was associated with lower DNA methylation of this adiponectin gene on the maternal side. Adiponectin and leptin are involved in energy metabolism and insulin sensitivity control. These epigenetic adaptations may have the potential to induce sustained glucose metabolism changes in the mother and the offspring later in life. Garcia Cardona et al. showed that obese children with insulin resistance had significantly decreased DNA methylation levels of adiponectin. Hence, epigenetic modifications were partially responsible for the development of obesity and other related metabolic disorders. Epigenetics and obesity. Numerous studies suggest a complex relationship between nutrient intake, oxidative stress, and epigenetic DNA methylation in obesity. Maternal obesity, dietary fat, and total energy intake induce altered epigenetic regulation of specific genes in the offspring. Studies focused on epigenetic marks in obesity have found altered methylation and or histone 
acetylation levels in genes involved in specific but also in more general metabolic processes. Epigenetic mechanisms can be influenced by both the quality and quantity of diet. Early exposure to a fat and rich diet programs the developmental profile and thus is associated with disease susceptibility in subsequent generations. The obesity-induced inflammation promoted by adipose tissue dysfunction is thought to be an important link between obesity and cancer. Inflammation induces an increase in free radicals and subsequently promotes oxidative stress, which may create a microenvironment favorable to the tumor development in obese patients. Epigenetics is a dynamic process. This makes obesity not just preventable, but also treatable and even curable with intensive lifestyle modification. The consequences of in utero exposure to maternal obesity are devastating. Preconception weight loss and maternal nutrition are vital components in preventing obesity and chronic disease in offspring. The following image shows transgenerational inheritance of metabolic disorders such as obesity, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes mellitus. Epigenetic modifications induced by nutrition, hyperglycemia, smoking, radiation, psychological stress, alcohol consumption, etc., can lead to a range of long term metabolic disorders in offspring. Epigenetics and preeclampsia. Abnormal DNA methylation during placentation is the most important epigenetic factor associated with preeclampsia. Numerous studies revealed altered expression of various genes in the pathological placentas of patients with preeclampsia. Epigenetic deregulation partially explains these alterations. Increased DNA methylation was demonstrated in multiple regions of the placentas of patients with preeclampsia. The following image shows major modifications of methylation occurring in preeclampsia. The main pathways are shown in green boxes. The significant alterations in methylation may be associated either to increased or decreased gene expression. So either hypermethylated, which is represented by the red circles, or hypomethylated, which is represented by the blue. Overall, several of the genome-wide studies show that methylation profiles differ between early and late-onset preeclampsia. This suggests a different etiology between these two types of disease. Early-onset preeclampsia shows more pronounced genome-wide hypermethylation changes. This can be attributed to earlier alterations allowing the epigenetic reprogramming to install earlier in response to the earlier cellular stress. Preeclampsia is not only associated with DNA methylation changes, but also with histone acetylation changes. MicroRNAs impact on the post-transcriptional regulation of the endothelin gene. Endothelin is a potent vasoconstrictor peptide. MicroRNAs may be upregulated or downregulated in the placentas of preeclamptic patients. The following image shows the microRNA pathways in the placenta, if not leading to, but certainly contributing to preeclampsia. Therapeutic uses of epigenetics. Targeting epigenetic changes translates to a greater potential for reprogramming as epigenetic marks are reversible. Medical therapies that alter epigenetic marks are useful in manipulating gene expression. Drugs that target enzymes that make or remove epigenetic marks are the focus of ongoing research. In conclusion, epigenetic marks are reversible, as previously mentioned. Hence, epigenetic targeted therapies may be able to reduce morbidity and mortality associated with several diseases. Epigenetics is, however, a very new field and more research is required. I hope you've learned something today. Perhaps you have a better understanding of epigenetics now, as I certainly do. Thank you so much.